Hey guys, it's Stephen here, and today I wanted to talk about how to invest in your 20s so you can be wealthy and essentially retire in your 30s. The longer that you delay investing your money, the longer it's gonna be before you can actually tell yourself that you actually made it. Investing your money in your 20s can potentially allow you to live a financially independent life in your 30s. I've compiled my key principles and the strategies that I've worked out over the years, put them together in this video, so that you can essentially make smart investing decisions right now. This way, if you start investing now, you're gonna have the freedom of being able to choose what you wanna do with your time in the future, instead of working for the man your entire life. So let's get into it. So the first thing that you wanna do if you've got any debt is actually pay that stuff off straight away. Consumer debt is the worst kind of debt. You're gonna be paying high interest rates and this stuff's gonna really erode any investment that you're trying to make because you're gonna get a better return of your money by simply paying that debt off rather than trying to save some money and invest that money. The interest rate that you're gonna achieve by saving and investing that money is gonna be a lot less than it, that you're getting charged by the credit card companies. You're gonna be paying over 20%. You wanna clear those debts off as soon as possible, create a debt payment plan, put aside a monthly amount so you can pay those debts off as quickly as possible, and then pin that on the wall so you can refer to it all the time. So if you hate debt, smash the like button and then create that payment plan so you can make sure you make those monthly payments to pay that debt off ASAP and then go and stick to that payment plan until that debt is paid off, you'll thank me later for it. So the first thing is to clear any debts that you currently have, especially consumer debts, before you start investing any of your money. So once you've worked out what kind of debts you've got and how you're gonna pay them off, the next step is actually to set yourself a budget for your expenses, for your living costs, and then stick to that. Based on how much you're earning, you wanna be ideally trying to save at least 50% of your income so you can put that towards investing that amount of income. So first things first, you wanna be able to save that money and so go and create another savings account that you can put that money straight in. So as soon as you get paid, move that money out into a savings account so you don't spend it and put it into an account that really that you don't look at, that you can't see too much. So you're not tempted to go and dip into that account, take money out and go and spend it on stuff that you get an impulse about wanting to buy. You've worked out your budget, the rest of it is just to pay your monthly bills, whatever they might be for food, utilities, that kind of thing. Another way to save a lot of money is to actually go and share your house with somebody else, go and move in with friends, but make sure you don't kind of ruin your budget by going out and buying expensive items like big TVs or new cars, Anything that you can put on HP and just make payments on, you're essentially gonna be getting yourself into consumer debt again, and therefore you're not having enough money to go and invest that money while you're still young enough to make that investment worthwhile. That type of spending is gonna really hold you back and set you back over the years because it's gonna take you a long time to go and pay that consumer debt off again. You're gonna to have to live a bit frugally for a while so that you've got more money to save. It's gonna take a certain amount of discipline to be able to live on that budget, but it's important that you keep to that because the money that you're gonna be saving is gonna be there as your investing kitty, so you can go and make more money, go and compound that money, make it grow, and once you start getting a return on that investment, you're gonna get pretty excited about saving this amount of money and then investing that amount of money rather than having the best, the biggest or latest gadgets that there might be out there. You're gonna be setting yourself up to be financially independent in your 30s and that's your goal. So keep that goal in mind, stick it up on your wall. That's your commitment. You're gonna be saving this amount of month no matter what you're doing and don't get tempted by new shiny objects that can take you off the tracks from what you're trying to achieve here. Now I wanna to talk to you about the eighth wonder of the world. You know what that is, right? No, it's not the leading Tower of Pisa. It is something that Albert Einstein raved about, and that's compound interest. It's amazing how this works, and it got me into a saving habit at a young age of 10 years old, when I created my first savings account. And I started earning a little bit of money from doing newspaper rounds, caddying, and that type of stuff. I was putting my money into my savings account to get that interest, and that would be compounded month after month after month. So what essentially is happening with compound interest is that you're getting an interest payment on the principal amount, and then you're earning interest on top of interest. That's the magic formula right there, is that you're then getting interest on top of interest, on top of your original principal amount, and this compounds over the years. So the longer you leave it there, compounding, getting more interest over interest, 
the bigger amount of that interest is going to be because you're earning interest on top of interest. So for example, if you had £10 invested today and you just left it there and you had it on a return that was index tracked on the stock exchange at say 8% is the average, that £10 in 10 years times would suddenly turn into £50. And likewise, if you took £100 and invested it at an 8% return, you would get £221 after 10 years. So you can see just by setting and forgetting something and then making sure that it's invested at a conservative amount, 8% average return on an index fund against a stock exchange, which is the kind of accepted norm over the time, you're gonna be getting a reasonable return for doing, and you just set and forget about it. You just leave it there, forget about it, and then return to it in X number of years. Boom, you've got a load of money. So essentially set and forget your savings go and visit them later on, and they've probably doubled. As long as you've left it there long enough time, it's not gonna double overnight or a year or two years or anything like that. You gotta leave them for a period of time. But the magic formula comes if you keep then adding more money to that every month. So here in the UK, we can invest in something called an ISA. Now this is a tax-free way of saving your money or investing your money so that you don't get taxed on any money that you make from that ISA. And so if you want to get that 8% return or better, you can invest that ISA in a stocks and shares ISA. Now this has to be in a UK fund. There's plenty of them around out there that you can go and research and find out which type of fund that you want to invest into. If you pick a stocks and shares ISA, you can invest up to £20,000 per year tax-free that's a great way to start. That's what I recommend that you do initially with your money is invest your money into a stocks and shares ISA tracking fund for that first 20 grand. Another way of looking at investing and the compound effect that it's gonna have is if you wanted to get to a million pounds, there's a way that you can do this in 30 years just by simply saving 660 pounds every month over a 30 year period at an 8% return your money is going to be worth one million pounds in 30 years time and with this strategy it's just a simple set and forget strategy you set 660 pounds to go into your investment fund you forget about it you return to it in 30 years time you've got a million pounds so the sooner you start the better you're going to be if you're starting in your 20s that means by the time you're in your 50s you you have a million pounds now I realize not everyone can start with 660 pounds, but that can be a goal that you aspire to get to as soon as possible. But no matter what it is, the sooner you start investing your money and putting some money aside, the more likely you're gonna be to become financially independent. As you get older, you're gonna be earning more money more likely than not. But the key thing is when you're earning more money, you don't allow your expenses to go up exponentially as well. You wanna keep your expenses kind of consistent to what they're on now especially in your 20s, you don't need to be buying lots of great things. No one expects you to have a lot of money. You, you know, you can drive a crappy car, you can live in a crappy house, you don't need a big house. <laughs> you can have whatever furniture, it doesn't matter. And putting more away to invest into so you can become financially independent sooner is that you're gonna have to learn to delay gratification. Another option that you can do is start your own business. Like we're in a digital age, Loads of people are able to start businesses now and work from home. And this is a great way if you're someone that's a bit of a self-starter, you've got discipline and you can motivate yourself. Creating your own business is gonna give you a lot of self-satisfaction. It's gonna be a bit of hard work though. You're not gonna be able to start up a business just working eight hours a day, Monday to Friday. You're gonna to have to put the time in and really work hard to create that business and get it set up. How many businesses fail in the first year there's loads of businesses that fail in the first year, mainly because people just give up. So we have bought and sold lots of different businesses over the time, and we started our own online business six years ago now, where we sell physical products online, and we sell on Amazon FBA, eBay, Walmart, and Shopify, our own storefront for our brand. One of the key things about starting your own business, though, is that you actually learn a hell of a lot more by doing, rather than procrastinating about whether to do this or whether to do that, just do something, make a step, do the first thing, and then you'll work out what the next step is after that one, whether it was right or wrong, it doesn't matter. The key point is just to start and do something. So in your 20s, you're young enough to take some risks. It doesn't matter if you make some failures along the way, you've got enough time, time is on your side to bounce back and 
put those things right again before you're getting older. You can start no end of different things in your 20s and I definitely recommend that you should try and start a business if that's one of the things that would get you inspired and motivated so you can work for yourself instead of working for other people. So another strategy that's very close to my heart is investing in property. Now this is something that I started when I was 23 and there's no reason that you can't do the same thing in your early 20s as well. The key thing that you're gonna need when you're buying a property is that cash to get to being able to have that deposit. Now once you've got that deposit, you then need to get a buy to let mortgage for your property. But one of the key things about this is you wanna be looking for areas, if you want a simple life, you wanna be looking for areas, you kind of know that there's gonna be capital appreciation over time. So big towns, big cities, areas that have had historical growth and have gone up and appreciate in value over time. You want to avoid areas that kind of stagnate or just go up a small percentage points over 10 years or something like that. London's an obvious choice in the UK, but there's plenty of places outside of London that you can invest in as well that will still get that growth. When you're buying your investment property, the key thing to make sure is that it cash flows. What I mean by that is that your expenses are less than the income that that property is generating. So always do your numbers, make sure you understand about all of the expenses that you could be from buying that property, doing your due diligence on that property, and make sure that the income is always gonna be more so when you look at your mortgage payments and your other bills and your management fees and anything like that, council tax, whatever you might have, maintenance, service charges. You just need to make sure that those expenses are always less than the rent that you're coming in. If it isn't, if the expenses are more, avoid that property. You don't want to be dipping into your own pocket to buy that property if you can't. Look in another area where it's cash flowing and you can still get capital appreciation. And then if you stick to that golden rule, you can essentially keep repeating that. Now, if your property appreciates in value, you can refinance, take some money out of it, and go and buy a second property. And the way to also do that is from your savings, you're saving some money there, together with the capital appreciation, put that together, you've got your deposit. Now you can probably go and repeat that process a few times, and then start buying a property, you know, maybe every year, every two years, every three years, depends how good you are at saving, how good you are at picking the right properties that appreciate in value, Maybe you'll manufacture some growth on that property, but then you've got to be a bit of an active investor rather than someone that's just passive and we're on the set and forget train of keeping it simple with some of the approaches that I'm talking about today. So if you're buying property in appreciating areas, you can kind of set and forget it again. You don't need to do anything to it. You just buy it, keep it for a period of time, and then you just hold it. So over 10 or 20 years, you find that it's doubled or tripled in value House prices generally double in value every 10 years at the moment. Another key decision when you're in your 20s is to kind of decide whether you want to buy or rent your own home. This can be a difficult decision, so because some people want the security of their own home, you're going to be saving a lot of money in the short term if you rent initially. Now what I did when I was younger, when I was 23, I bought my own home and I moved out of it after six months and I rented it out. Now there's nothing that says that you can't do the same thing with that. And I rented and went in and moved with two other, two other mates suddenly all of my bills were split three ways. I had a cash flow property and that was generating me another 250 pounds a month positive cash flow that was then paying half of my rental then. So I was living very cheaply and I was, you know, I was 24 at the time when I was doing that. And so there's nothing that, you, that says that you can't do the same thing. Buy your own home if you want to and then you know, if you still wanna live there, what you can do is make sure what property that you buy is at least a two better or a three better and guess what you can do with the other beds? That's right, you can kind of rent one of those rooms out or two of those rooms out, depending on how much you can afford to buy that house for, whether it's a two or three bed. But if it's a two bed, you can definitely just go and rent one of those rooms out. And then suddenly you're gonna be splitting all the bills or that rent is gonna be paying down your mortgage while you're still in your actual home. So you've got the security of owning your own home. No landlord can kick you out or anything like that that comes with rentals and you can rent out one of the rooms and you're kind of in control who comes and goes in that room. You can pick who you want to live with. So that's going to really save you a lot of expenses and allow you to save a lot more money to invest going forward. Now I've recently posted a video about buying versus renting which I'm going to be linking to here. So if you want to check that out, it's a good video that goes through the pros and cons of buying and renting which is the cheaper. I recommend going and checking that video out.
So in your 20s, a key thing that you want to be thinking about is building up your credit score. Now, to achieve this, you're going to have to apply for a credit card. If you have never applied for a credit card, I recommend going and applying for one now. So you want to be putting onto your credit card things that you normally pay, like your utilities, your food, ordinary monthly stuff that you, that you, you spend your money on. And then what you want to be doing at the end of the month is paying all of that money off of your credit card so you're back to zero. You can set up an automatic payment that just says pay the entire bill off from your account and then you can just monitor that make sure you're not overspending onto your credit card. But this way after about 9 months, 12 months, you're going to build up a great credit score as long as you've been paying that off each month diligently and making sure you're not overspending compared to what you'd be spending if you're just using your own cash or your debit card from your account. This way if you've got a good credit, lenders are going to be fighting over you to offer you money so that you can go and buy your investment property or buy your own home, whichever one is suiting your purpose right now. So I hope that's given you some insights in what you can do with your money in your 20s so you can become wealthy and essentially retire in your 30s. Remember, the sooner you start, the sooner this is going to become a reality and you can kind of quit that rat race if that's something that really you are aspiring to do and is one of your financial goals. I know it was for me. Give us a like if you learned something today, it really help out my channel and comment below if you've got any questions and I'll do my best to answer all of them as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. I'll be posting a lot more videos like this going forward and I'm going to be posting them every week if not twice a week. I also have a property investing Facebook group if you want to join that, it's free to join where we'll just keep the discussion going about property related things in that Facebook group. I'll post a link below. Feel free to follow me on Instagram and see what I'm up to over there and I'll see you next time.